All right, guys. <clears throat> Hopefully the lens isn't going to fog up because it was cool in the shop. It is muggy and hot out here. But as you can see, these are the rims that came on the truck. And the rims that came on it are 20 inches. This is an 18. It's just a spare I picked up. It's fairly bald. It's a set. I picked up a set. So I need a spare and I'll show you why. I'm out here right now just fixing to torque them down. Swap them over. Alright, here's my contraption. I did try to break this tire down off the rim. I see I broke the bead, obviously. But, uh, Trying to use pry bars, these little thin rims. It's just not gonna work out. It's gonna break the rim. So the reason for this is, as you can see, this rim has a crack in it. It has been repaired before. I was unaware of this when I bought it. It had been painted black. You couldn't tell. The giveaway, you can kind of still see right there. There's a little yellow mark. And this thing has been leaking around this bead right here. Pretty consistently, it got to be about every three or four days it was leaking down. So it's obviously had a big crack in it. I'm curious if I can give it a repair with the uh, aluminum brazing rods. So I did pick up some uh, Hobart brazing rods. Probably not going to mess with it tonight. I'll probably wait till tomorrow to mess with this, but uh, I was just sort of testing out my setup here for cinching the tire down and uh, getting it off the, the bead without... Now I could probably take this thing to Walmart or somewhere local and just have them break the tire down, but... I figured I'd do it this way. Just see if I could do it. It definitely, uh, they didn't do a great job smoothing that surface up. So that can definitely be improved upon with a good sanding disc. So if I can get it brazed back together, we will uh, go from there. I got to prep the joint before I try anything. So. to mute that because that was probably awful. It doesn't actually look like the crack goes all the way through there. It's hard to tell. On the back side it definitely does though. from there. All right guys, I'll spare you the boredom this uh, of 30 minutes of your life you'll never get back. 
this torch i spent about 30 minutes last night i could not get this rim hot enough to melt the aluminum so i do have an oxyacetylene pencil torch i did not have oxygen last night though otherwise i would have broke that out so i went to the store picked up a bottle of oxygen i'm gonna get my pencil torch while this thing is preheating and uh get my pencil torch out and see if we can't make it happen that way
All right. Again, this is like soldering. I still got a little bit of a low place right there. The thing is to get that hot, it's really difficult to get this to not melt and droop. So, and gravity's working against me. Everything's trying to run down. So I might try a little bit more on this edge. All right, lay that on super thick. So definitely looks nasty. We'll see what it looks like after I clean her up. All right, guys, here is the finished product for the most part. I, uh, <clears throat> I've probably been sitting here grinding on this thing for 15 minutes, nice and slow and easy. So let's see, we'll go through the steps. I didn't, I didn't have my big, my big tripod, so I didn't capture everything. First thing, took the cutting disc, trimmed it all up, got the big stuff off with the cutting disc. Then I came back with this flap wheel. I love these little flap wheels too, they're nice. Really cleaned up in here. I couldn't do much on this backside. So for the backside, and again, if it wasn't for the tools I have, I would have taken and just had this tire dismounted somewhere. But uh, I've got cylinder head porting tools like this, this carbide uh, rasp. I mean, this thing just I actually mowed through too much material right there and I actually got a little bit of a divot. No big deal though. Main thing I didn't want a high spot because a high spot, the tires gonna have a hard time to seal. So a low spot and it's just a little bit low. I'm gonna come in and uh, I did actually sand it smooth too, but I took the burr and I re-roughed it because I'm actually gonna come in. It's just not as smooth as I want it to be. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of JB weld just to get the surface finish good and smooth and slick. And uh, you guys can see here, the backside turned out real nice. This is pretty well the weld line right here, the crack line. So a little bit of underfill right there, nothing bad. This part here where the crack extended down looks real good. And I was able to fill this corner here real well too. If I can get in good and tight. Let's see if this little thing will zoom. I get a little bit of zoom. So we had the crack on the back side right here. This is actually just a mark that uh, could stand to be JB welded as well. Just knock down that it's a little divot. But this isn't a ceiling surface. This is the critical surface right here. It needs to be good and smooth. So I roughed it so the JB weld will stick. I'll JB weld it, light sand it. And uh, we should be getting ready to be done. All right, guys, here we are. So we can get in there and show a little bit. Got a couple spots JB welded up. So they are going to sand those down here. And uh, about three, three spots JB welded up and get those sanded. All right, guys, here's the repair finished up and sanded. Let's see, it's got a little bit of a bad area right there, but I'll probably throw some RTV in that thing up above it. That's really where the back of the beetle sits. I'm not too worried about it. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, I can't really get you in there with the way this tire's sitting. But uh, this upper portion where the bead really seals up above this is real smooth so that's the main focus this upper area <clears throat> so well uh i vacuumed it out already i sanded it with 80 and then some 150 that i had laying around and uh got the jb well down good and smooth the braze repair looks good still so we'll uh blow some air in this thing Actually, just blow out any debris, unchain it, and see if we can get her to air up. All right, guys, soap and water. Got tire on. It does look like the bee's leaking up top. Son of a buck. On a completely different place. But I think that's something I can clean. If I have to 
break the bead and then reseal it. That's probably not the end of the world. I did find another nail. It was a real small, like a little brad nail. Probably hear it hissing out. So I'm gonna plug it and uh, see if I can't chase this little leak right here. Which I've had fairly good success hitting it with a sledgehammer. If I knew where the sledgehammer was. Oh man, I got a mess. Got a mess in here I need to get cleaned up. Well, I'll look for the sledgehammer and come back to this. Alright guys, we have uh, got her mounted back up. Finally got the bead sealed up. Got her popped in place. Uh, we didn't have any leaks. She's holding 50 pounds of air. Still had a little bit of water sitting in here. You could tell, so uh, I'm going to spritz that with some black spray paint right before I throw her on the truck and call it a day. i trim this plug off because that it had a nail in it that was leaking. So Trim that down and we'll be good to go. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, I'll try to get more out. It's been busy, so if you like, uh, hit the like button, help us out, and if you want to, subscribe. We were always doing interesting stuff.